Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Deep Focus Show. I'm Clayton. I'm Davi. And today, uh, we... <laughs> oh, Tavi, we changed our schedule a little bit. We're not going to be doing Scorsese um, until the new movie, Killers of the Flower Moon, is out. But we have something a little bit different for you. I don't see a lot of rankings for this director. Uh, we have Jeremy Saunier. He's a good director. What about you, Tavi? What, what is your first experience with him? Have you heard about him before? No, not really have heard anything about him. Although, like the um, green room, like I've seen the poster or something before. The, but, yeah, the poster's but, pretty iconic, um, especially in the A24 yeah. sphere. We're continuing that trek of those kinds of movies. Um <laughs> Although he's not completely an A24 director, I guess I guess uh, A24 heads could call it A24 vibes on his other films, but eh, I'm not sure mm. we can get into this. I have heard of him before quite a while ago, actually. I saw, I was scrolling through Netflix one time in the early heydays of it, and I saw a synopsis for blue ruin and i was like wow that looks like a really good movie and i might have clicked it and watched maybe the first 10 or 15 minutes of it but i had to turn it off and do other things at the time um but then i wanted to see his movies chronologically so i actually ended up watching murder party shortly before green room was released and then i saw green room um months after that and i was really impressed so it was. This is uh. This is my pick, and I, um, I, I like him. I guess you'll know my rankings soon enough. Uh, Tavi, I'm gonna let you go first because I'm not sure what you might think of my rankings, and we've been keeping it a mystery between each other. Oh yeah, no Aiden today. He's at the beach. Just so everybody's aware. <laughs> yeah. 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 So are we going one by one? Like. Yes. Okay, yeah. So, I your, what's I, your number four? Yeah, yeah, my number four. So, I think I think you know what's coming as my number four, and it's <laughs> it's it's the debut film, Murder Party, from two thousand and seven. Let's say it was a interesting watch. <laughs> I'm gonna start by saying that, and it it was like this. The group of art students is Halloween party of like making the perfect but violent art and damn what a what a poor guy that Chris was attending the party and what strange things happened there and yeah I, I just thought it was quite a random film and it's very in indie and very low budget yeah I guess. I guess not sure is was the did I have the perfect experience for, for it like watching it from YouTube from my laptop screen like I, I feel like it would be, be a fun movie with a uh, a bunch of friends and if you're completely stoned or something because <laughs> I don't see how anybody else could get through that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah yeah I I I think the only like a positive thing for me was like a simple fact that is that it gave me some laughs and perhaps some of them were how just ridiculous the film was but yeah it was gory and I don't know I don't know it, it's not anything like I would prefer watching so it's hard for me to recommend this at all, honestly. I'm going 1.5 stars for this. So it's, to me, it's like a bad film. I'm sorry. Like, I know it's the first one, but I have to compare to the other films, and yeah, it just doesn't compare. That's completely fair, man. I know. I um, want to ask is this the worst film that you've seen? On since we've started this podcast, like I know, I gave Fear and Desire the same score, but 
honestly, if I would have to watch either one, I would probably watch Fear and Desire. Nice. Perhaps. So maybe maybe it was. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, how about your number four? Yeah, I. Uh, this was kind of a struggle for me. Um, like I struggled really hard with this, um, and I kind of changed my pick at the last minute. Uh, it's not Murder Party. Spoiler. Um, so this is uh, oh. this is yeah, <laughs> this is Jeremy's most star-studded movie. Um, it has Jeffrey Wright and Alexander Skarsgård, who you know I, I really can't stand as an actor. I think he's not very good, but it's also his most underwhelming. Uh, I found this movie to be kind of a slog. I'm not really sure what he's wanting to achieve with this film, <clears throat> especially coming after a very good film that I like. Uh, it, I think it's his most ambitious effort to date, but it, it, it really does nothing for me. Um, it's like he's trying to take everything he's learned up to this point, and instead is, is he's trying to attempt to become like Taylor Sheridan, uh, a la Wind River. I don't know if you've seen that movie. Um, it's really good, but <clears throat> it's, uh, yeah. This movie really annoyed me, and I wish I had more positive things to say about it. I couldn't get into it. I think the narrative is really unfocused. Um, it, it reminds me of kind of like a bad Showtime s- series that is just edging to get noticed, but ends up getting canceled uh, at the last minute. I can kind of think of a recent Showtime show that I was watching that I can't put my finger on the name, but it had Mora Tinney in it. And uh, I was like, yeah, this is bad. And it reminded me of that. Um, I'm going to go two stars. Uh, I wanted to put this ahead of my next pick, but it's just kind of disappointing to me that he went in this direction. Um, I know he's going to end up switching things up. Uh, he has a, he has another movie coming out. We, we can talk a little bit about it later. Um, but it's filming right now. I just, I was, I was really disappointed. So Hold the Dark is two stars for me. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. I, I'm not sure. Are you going to be happy about my next pick? But it's the... It's his second film, um, Blue Ruin, from 2013. And... <laughs> Man! And... <laughs> yeah, so this was like a re- revenge thriller. It was a like a Kickstarter film. And it premiered at Cannes Film Festival. And it follows this guy named Dwight and he, um and he hears the news of a murderer's release from prison and how it affects him and his everyone around him and i just hmm, this was a toughest one to place because i wasn't really sure is this my do I rank it like the second or third? Because I think it. I think the film moved se- semi nicely forward. It, it had a good length, and I think you can clearly see the evolution um, of his like a from the filmmaking standpoint compared to his debut film mm. but um i think the biggest flaw i had with it was the was the acting and i i'm pretty sure you're not gonna agree with this but i couldn't really find really chemistry with like making player and like his sister and like the body he had and I think especially with her sister, I just thought how they handled some scenes and emotions like in the 
restaurant of her sister hearing what he has done and I don't it's I don't know really how to explain it, but it just didn't ever feel so real to me and I think I... Megan Blair is is a fine actor in a, some respect, but I don't think he's a lead actor. I think he's I knew you were gonna say that. I just I yeah. knew you were gonna say Ah. Uh, I think he does well. I he's he's the he needs to be a lead more. That's all I'm gonna say, but oh man, I was hoping you wouldn't say those words. Supporting Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, cuz I th- yeah, cuz I just I I don't really have problems with him appearing in all of his, uh, Jeremy's films, but I I just really I wanted something a little more like having more emotional weight behind his acting or something like I, I I loved his act. I loved the dining the the diner scene uh, with him and his sister. Um, yeah, that, I thought that was really heavy stuff. But yeah, I, I don't know. Much for I you. don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like this, this was the hardest one to put together. Like I gave it like a three stars. I think it's a solid film. Like. But, but like I think from the like the visual style is much more prominent to his later releases, and I think he's still kind of learning. But he's way more up there than compared to Murder Party, at least. So yeah, I disappointed you, but what's your number three? It's okay. So um, you can probably guess this one. Um, I'm going to preface this by saying a couple of things. I am the kind of person that I'm, I'm much more kinder on directors, uh, directorial debut films. Um, more often than not, there's always going to be some sort of hint of influence in their early work that you can pick up on later in their films down the line. And I, I like going back to that and looking um although this is not a film that i'm going to ever come back to um i think this is a this the second thing i wanted to preface is that uh, this is a better debut feature than kubrick's first two films not that it's a competition but just to give people some perspective i was more entertained by this film than than those films uh i got murder party near the bottom uh, at number three a um, couple of good things to start off with i like how low budget this is and it kind of still manages to be refined enough to look somewhat interesting um you know cool practical effects that it seems like anybody could do them um in their own home with enough creativity uh although you have to have at least a three hundred thousand dollar budget um that's considered a low budget um the budget here well actually it was less than three hundred thousand dollars or two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars but yeah some cool effects i love how the majority of this film is really dialogue heavy before any of the actual violence begins um it's basically about a man who thinks he's going to a halloween party but is accidentally snatched by a bunch of artsy fartsy snobs whose intentions are quite sinister um they end up doing drugs and they talk incessantly and try to impress a faux art director or dealer uh the dialogue isn't that great however um i like the execution of the dialogue more than i like the dialogue itself there are some funny moments but there's also some unnecessary scenes like there's this one scene where this person is talking about a certain racial slur that i wasn't really too much into i didn't understand why that had to be in there um the climax is interesting and uh obviously there's a theme of how pretentious and yes i i do mean that word in the literal sense that the art world can be in looking at this film in hindsight it just shows how loyal the director is to his partners 
um, as one of the actors ended up, like you mentioned, starring in uh, a much better film with Blue Ruin. And uh, I've seen this movie twice. Like I said, I'm not exactly sure what I was thinking the first time I saw it uh, because I thought it was a mildly entertaining first watch. Um, but I really wasn't impressed the second time I saw this. I thought it was kind of cringy. The last scene, however, is pretty hilarious. So I'm going to also give it two stars uh, for Murder Party. But um, yeah, same as Hold the Dark. It's a little bit... It's I don't want to say it's a better film overall because obviously it's not as uh, well made, but I had a better time watching this than I did Hold the Dark. So that's my number t- three. My number three. I got two more that I really like. So spoiler. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think hearing about the like you saying that the two Stanley Kubrick films are worse than this. I I think just that that. Statement alone makes Aiden Aiden cry in his beach beach house right now. Yeah, he's okay. gonna be. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my number two is is Hold the Dark. Um, I I gotta say this this was a quite odd odd film. I I honestly thought this would be more straightforward film but damn i was wrong and i think the best part of the film is the um jeffrey wright's performance i think he's really great in this and um i'm not sure is it uh, it's it might be the best performance like in jeremy's Filmography. I'm not. I'm not sure. There's one that I'm thinking that it could. In, in Jeffrey's uh, filmography uh, or, or or Jeremy. Um, Jeremy's like the directors looking at these four films. Oh, okay. So I was about to say you haven't seen Westworld then. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, Bye. I don't know. I might have said wrong, but no, um, it's okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think I think this film probably had the most visual style, perhaps like with the nature and all, and it was very consistent and um. So I like the I like I think the best parts were the some of the acting and. Uh, the visual style overall, but I wasn't always sure. Like, was I watching an action film or horror? Like, there's like the one scenes that couple of scenes that feels super action film related, and then there is this like horror, a lot of horror elements almost. And I wasn't always sure what. Um, what way are we going with this film and and I was kind of lost at some points too like this was kind of a odd watch um, and I don't know I, I think the main villain with Alexander yeah Skarsgård is um, I don't know I think the Villain was a little lame, I gotta admit. I, um, a little spoiler, but he just, I think he just killed and killed everything that came on his way, and there wasn't he's really not, any. He's not so, the best actor at playing a villain, a villainous role. And he's, he's so typecast, yeah. I feel like, and it's just, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah. Off. Yeah, like. I need. I would have liked some substance for the character, and I don't know. It was just odd, but so I, I really had tough 
to know is this my second or third but this is also a three star so like I I, I think uh, Blue Ruin has a very good chance to get to my second place but I think I was I think I was more impressed with the um, visual style and Jeffrey Wright in this so it gave the edge to hold the dark but it was it I gotta admit it was a little odd watch but yeah that's my number two yeah for sure um looks like we aren't <laughs> rating him too kindly uh but that's gonna change right now because I love this film this is a damn good film um so yeah, this movie, like you said, is a perfect example of how a Kickstarter campaign for your film should be. Uh, I have Blue, Ru- Blue Ruin at number two. Um, I think this movie is all about violence with clear intent that is justified. So it's justified violence. It's about a man who finds out the person who killed his parents is released from prison, so he sets out and is on a hunt for them. Um, but that person's family is dead set on getting revenge on him because of that murder. So it becomes like a cat and mouse situation, kind of. And it's just really a cycle of revenge, but it's not your typical revenge thriller. It's kind of like an anti-revenge thriller. Um, because underneath the surface, something isn't right. You know, the, the character's intentions he is, is quite clear. You know, he acts with no hesit- hesitancy. Um in this entire movie until the very last scene where he's like, he sort of questions it. Uh, so it, it, in a way it's, it's, it's sort of a modern day Western um, part of this movie. I think is kind of even funny. Uh, there's a scene like, like I mentioned earlier in the diner where he's having such an emotional connection with his sister uh, and I, I, I love those two actors, Megan Blair and, um, I'm blanking on the name of her, but yeah, they're they're really great. I thought the chemistry was really good. I kind of disagree with you in that, but that's fine. Um, anyways, they're they're having a a conversation in that diner, uh, and he's talking about the man he just killed. But someone next to the table is like, "Could you pass the ketchup, please?" Obviously, you could hear that entire conversation. Um, it's just little things like that that really just makes this film feel very real and less formulaic um there are some things that i wish was a little bit more clear and had a better focus uh in the first act he's kind of a homeless character but then like 25 minutes into the movie he's kind of breaks into a house and starts shaving and uh and he's he looks completely different and it's just not the same character as the person in the first 25 minutes. Um, Mm -hmm. Something that is kind of quite clear in this film, uh, and and also in my number one, is is the color palette. Uh, You know, Jeremy is the color guy. And I love how everything in this film, there's like a blue tint. And he, obviously, he echoes this in the next film with green, which is really nice that we have the same number one. But... I I think this was also the year where other movies were putting blue in their title. Like you had a Blue Jasmine and Blue Valentine with Ryan Gosling. That was kind of interesting. Um, the whole movie isn't isn't really blue though. Uh, it's only uh, I heard for three fourths of it, the director said he wanted the blue effect to portray kind of a melancholic comfort. Uh, like a tranquil t- tone to it, but uh, it isn't until the last final act that everything just kind of turns blood red. And I love that for this film. Um, I'm going to give it a four and a half. I think it's really good. I think it's a good indie film. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people at the Cannes Film Festival were really impressed with it as much as I was. So, yeah, that's my number two. I guess we have the same number one, Tavi. Yeah, yeah. I I like one 
another 2013 film with blue is blue is the warmest color. Oh yes, yeah. I haven't yeah. seen that one. But yeah, yeah. So number one, Green Room, 2015. I like the A24 horror film, and it follows this punk band who witnesses a murder and now is attacked by these skinheads, and they're trapped in a green room. And yeah, I I was quite impressed with this film, honestly. Like I I'm sure I'm not the biggest horror guy in this um podcast, definitely, but um I gotta say there was some some very very exciting scenes and riveting and some scenes that were kinda hard to watch even and even if I first like thought like is this horror but but I guess in the like the especially in the half point forward it really changes it up and starts even more building up the tension and I think it overall had the best acting from the all of the films from the like a, a whole whole cast, but I think this uh, standout performance, which I think you agree with, is Patrick Stewart. Um, oh, yeah, nobody yeah. else could play that villain. He's a literal yeah. Nazi. <laughs> yeah, like. Only, only thing that I was a little disappointed of him wasn't really his his fault, but I guess it was like perhaps I wanted more of him. Perhaps sometimes it felt like he just gave orders to, <laughs> like he's the organizer. I get it, but I would have liked even more scenes with him, like. Maybe even exploring his character a little more. But I don't know, am I missing the point of his character now or what? But... I don't know. I kind of... I His character is just so evil. Um, and it's it's one of those characters like in... Uh, kind of like in that Night of the Hunter, you don't really have to give him enough depth, as Aiden was saying, even though I, I, I wanted more depth from Mitchum's character or yeah Mitchum and, and Night of the Hunter but um this is uh I mean this guy's playing a little old Nazi so I, I don't I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. yeah like yeah it's a uh, it's a tough one but but yeah overall overall I I enjoyed it the most definitely it, it went super nicely it was like 95 minutes it says and just uh, um had a good I had a good time with it overall and but um I think I I do have slight problems with like Especially like the, not sure did I enjoy how the, like the Patrick Stewart guy, spoiler alert, how he, how he died and it almost, it felt, it felt really odd that he just started walking backwards and then he just, then the others just shot him. Like he didn't really try to do anything or. I don't know, do you agree with this at all? But uh, I think it was a strange way to drop off his character. From the no, film. I I uh, kind of disagree. I like I like that, that scene quite a bit. Um, everything just kind of happened so fast. Like, I mean, what are you supposed to do in that moment? And uh, it, it fits his character because he's so stoic. 
Um, so for him to just casually yeah. walk away, you know, mm, yeah, I, I it, don't it, it, it's almost, it's almost, he's almost like pompous, pompously walking away as if, oh, this person's not going to shoot me. I might as well just leave, but <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, 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 but yeah, so, so I'm giving this a four star. I think it's a very good film and as always with me with horror like it's it's tough for me to get the like a five star film because did you like I this don't... better than hereditary Ooh. I question, I probably <laughs> I probably prefer um hereditary uh hereditary honestly a little more like like i think i think that film would have been 4.5 if like the ending was the probably the reason it dropped the four for me so yeah yeah but yeah Um... so I don't. I don't know what I was saying anymore. But <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. So you, yeah, you, you're giving this a four. Yeah, it's a it's a four star film. Like it's sometimes with horror. It's sometimes like I kind of want rewatchability, and I don't know. Like watching, like I I enjoyed kind of watching it, but it's hard for me. Like to start watching horror myself like i don't know it's just not my not my scene really that's fair yeah yeah what's, um what's your take on green room i think it has really good rewatchability um i got green room that's number one uh it's one of the things i like about jeremy like you were saying is he he loves to play with suspense and um he's a master at kind of building up that suspense and then having sweet release and then building it back up again uh i have green room number one like his previous film the the color palette in this and this is a uh, green while blue ruin was blue so i think it's a sort of a spiritual sequel to Blue Ruin, in a sense. Um, I can see this film taking influence from movies like Saw and its use of colors, because uh, in, in Saw there were also kind of shades of green in that room. Um, much like this film where these punk rockers are being held captive. Uh, not only does this movie have good direction, but it has excellent screenwriting, I think. Um, the story is sim- simple, kind of like its theme which is just simply don't trust evil neo-nazis because they suck <laughs> uh yeah it's about a group of punk rockers who take a gig at a club and then they find out that it's a nazi club and they witness a murder and things just kind of go off the beaten path from there um there's a scene at the beginning of this movie where the band they're discussing their desert island band and they're and it kind of comes back around in the final scene where one of the surviving characters tells another surviving character that he knows what his desert desert island band is and the other girl just sort of responds casually tells someone who gives a shit and i think it's very simple yet effective way of express of expressing that this director had a lot of fun with this film and he really doesn't care what anybody else thinks about it. And except me. <laughs> I for one think it's an S tier A24 film. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a five star. I think it's it's really good. Um it's not up there with uh Midsmar and Hereditary. Although I might I might like this film a little bit more than Hereditary, I'm not sure. But it's definitely S tier, one of the few S tier A24 films. They have a lot of age here, though. So, um, yeah, that's that's our ranking. Mm. Thanks, everybody. Um, Javi, you know he has a he has a new film coming out called yeah. Rebel Ridge, I believe, and it's supposed to be about 
racial injustice in America. So that should be kind of interesting. Do you have any thoughts mm-hmm. on that? Um, I I I saw that the it's like the I saw the title, but I really never checked anymore. Like I don't these all these actors. Like do I, do you oh, know these yeah. actors? Oh yeah, I know that Don Johnson. Like I know him, and James Cromwell. Those are semi big actors. From like have. Have you seen Knives Out? Don Johnson is in that. Yes. One. Yeah. And I guess probably he was in big. Miami Vice. <laughs> yeah. Probably probably not as big of actors as he had in Hold the Dark. I feel like Jeffrey Wright and uh, Alexander Skarsgård are probably bigger names, but yeah, um, perhaps now I think those actors were bigger like years ago. It does have that guy from The Office in it. <laughs> The uh, oh, oh, I forgot his oh. name, David Denham. I'll put the picture. Up oh on the yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Roy, is it Roy? Roy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't really have any thoughts on that film, but yeah, it sounds interesting, and I'll definitely yeah, be giving it a watch. Hmm. Yeah. So let us know your favorite Jeremy Songyer films. I, I'm really glad we did this, Tavi, and thanks for indulging in my horror directors. You know, I'm going to have them every now and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And we do apologize oh. about Scorsese, but it's coming yeah, soon. Yeah, def- yeah, it's coming soon, and well, it's fun to have the new film with it too so absolutely yeah yeah well thanks guys bye-bye yes thank you bye-bye